Good morning, Mark Sadath, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 30th, 2017. We now have Tropical Storm Irma, which we will talk about in just a moment, in the far eastern Atlantic, the National Hurricane Center, just now issuing advisories on that system. And, of course, we're still tracking Harvey, which is now inland, finally, over southwest Louisiana here, and it'll continue to move farther inland and slowly begin to wind down after its long saga from Africa, tracking all the way to the Caribbean where it caused flooding in Barbados and then sort of died away and went dormant in the central Caribbean only to come back to life near and over and just after the Yucatan and the rest of it you know, the rest of that story you know quite well. Before we look at the advisory information because it's still loading from the different products from the National Hurricane Center. Let's take a look at the satellite loop this morning. And you can see here is Harvey over Louisiana. Very heavy rainfall continues over parts of southeast Texas and southwest to western Louisiana. And we even have these feeder bands that are coming in to portions of the central Gulf Coast. Those have impacted Mississippi and into Alabama going across the I-10 corridor and now into southwestern Alabama, and there is a severe weather threat associated with that that you need to be aware of, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. Here is newly designated Irma to the west of the Cabo Verde Islands. That's what they're, I guess, officially called now, so i got to get used to calling them that myself. I used to know them as the Cape Verde Islands, and this is setting up to be a classic long-track hurricane that uh, we're, I don't want to say used to tracking, but this is going to be one that we're going to, we are going to be able to and need to watch over the next week to 10 days. So let's go back to the National Hurricane Center homepage and let's see if everything has updated. Most of the products should have by now. So Harvey, the 11 a.m. Eastern Time advisory info, 45 mile per hour winds, and that's more than likely happening over the water. The pressure is up a little bit to 993. Like I said, it's over land, and here's the forecast track map, and this shows how it moves farther and farther away from the water. Thank goodness it uh, downgrades itself to a depression. Over time, the center, the low pressure center will fill, and the center is supposed to track up through here, but there's going to be a lot of weather associated with it all throughout this region. As these feeder bands come in, you'll see on radar over the next few days, they will try to stream in from the Gulf of Mexico. You know, the low pressure area, it's not a living creature per se, but it's going to try to stay alive, if you will. The process is the engine is going to try to stay running, and so it's going to dump a lot of heavy rainfall across uh, a good part of the southeast over the next few days. And if we look at the rainfall potential, you can see that here and get the view image there. Uh, illustrates very strongly the point that uh, not heavy, ridiculous amounts of rain like we have seen recently, but certainly enough rainfall that it could make travel difficult and just be a continued major pain in the you-know-what. All right, so now let's look at what's happening with Irma and the maps here. There we go. Nope, that's still, for some reason, Harvey. Try again, Mark. Irma forms, no immediate threat to land, so the maps aren't up yet. Uh, it, so the winds with Irma are already up to 50 miles per hour. Wow, I didn't know that. And um, the discussion's not issued just yet. We don't have to worry about this too much right now. I think the headline covers everything that we need to know for now, and that is that it is no immediate threat to land. Uh, and I'm going to show you some more stuff on Irma here in just a moment. But it is official, winds are 50 pressure 1004 and it's moving west at 13 miles per hour and that is exactly what the classic Cape Verde hurricanes do. They don't move westward typically at 20 knots or whatever like we saw earlier in the season. This is not the same background state and I'm going to show you that in just a moment uh, as we look through the different uh, slides or tabs that I've got. And not to be outdone, but here in the Eastern Pacific, I don't want to ignore this. We do have people uh, with interest out here. This hasn't updated yet, but uh, this is potential tropical cyclone number 14. They do the same thing in the Eastern Pacific where when you have a potential system, and this is basically 
uh, for development, 100% chance. Uh, good, there it is. Okay, I forgot they do generate maps for it. This will be upgraded. Uh, I don't even remember what the next name storm is, and I am ashamed for that. But the most important thing is that this is going to impact the Baja as a tropical storm. And you say, oh, it's just a tropical storm. Okay, well, I think we're over that by now. And we realize that just tropical storms can bring problems. So you folks on the Baja, heavy rain, gusty winds from time to time, tropical storm conditions, and that would spread over even into mainland Mexico there uh, over the next few days. This entire region, give me my color thing there, thank you. This entire region uh, certainly under the threat of heavy rainfall is the main issue. So please keep that in mind. I guess the good news here, it is not forecast to become a hurricane. So we've already looked at the satellite picture. Now I'll show you the Weather Service homepage, and this gives you an idea of all the areas that are being impacted still by Harvey. <clears throat> we have the flash flood watches, the flash flood warnings here in eastern Texas now, Beaumont, Port Arthur, and vicinity. Very, very high impact event from the heavy rain. Some of the pictures that I have seen coming out of there on social media are absolutely staggering. They almost look computer generated, but they're not. It's like, wow. And I really feel bad for people there. We have uh, folks that I know personally there that I have met because of HurricaneTrack.com, and they are going through this. And just as an example, there was a guy the other night that owns a detailing business in Beaumont, and he came out because he was watching the stream and he knew where I was, and I was meeting with another friend of ours at a, at a restaurant, and he came out to say hi. And now before you go, oh, that's creepy. Nah, not really. These are people that have a deep passion for this, and you know that's a story for another day. But the point is, this nice guy comes out, says hello, and you know he's got a business there, and he lives there. And I'm you know messaging him on Facebook, and he's talking about how unbelievable it is. Luckily, so far, at least as of last night, he didn't have any flooding. I got to check on both of them, these two gentlemen that I know and their families. But wow, you know it's like that really hits close. Uh, to the heart because I know these people they're not just visitors to the site or subscribers to the site they matter okay and so it's just terrible what's happening and it's going to continue through the area unfortunately as this slow circulation finally moves inland and gets away from the area but I just wanted to show you the scope of this throughout the region just a large area uh, like I said across the I-10 corridor here you all need to be very mindful of that uh, through the next day or so as this moves on. And if we look at the radar, I do believe I have that pulled up. I mean, here you go. You can see there's a couple of different clusters here. One of them still stuck here over eastern Texas, southwest Louisiana. And then there are those bands that come in. And any one of these that develops over your area can produce very heavy rainfall. And this is far removed from the center. So this gives you an idea of what's going on with the radar, if you know people traveling across Interstate 10 here, through the Florida Panhandle, across Mississippi and Louisiana, and finally into western Louisiana, and then basically over here, once you get to this part, you can forget it. It's closed. Um, just be careful. I mean, really, it's a mess. My plan, I'm over here in the Houston area. I'm going to have to basically go up and around everything and then head up this way and then come back across like this and eventually you know, whatever, to get back home to North Carolina. It's just, hey, it's the way it is. It's hurricane season. But, man, it's it's a tragedy because it's really impacting people. And as excited as we get about this stuff, and we do, we have to admit that a lot of people, not everybody, they do get excited about seeing hurricanes out there, just like what they do with blizzards. And it doesn't mean that it's a good thing. I don't want people getting mad and saying, oh, that's ridiculous. It's, they're not good things. They're just processes of nature. We get excited about them. And unfortunately, sometimes uh, that turns into something tragic. And we don't need to lose sight of that. I certainly don't. All right, so back to the task at hand. You know, sometimes this is going to get mixed in with some uh, commentary and editorializing because we're people, okay? This is not just strictly an outlook and discussion here, but there is a human side to it. I just want to make that point. So back to the maps, the vorticity information here, the uh, round shape, of course, to Harvey, very evident. Uh, here's the system developing 
in the uh, eastern Pacific, not quite as well organized. And then here is Irma, and we're going to be able to watch this as it grows and moves uh, off to the west over time. And you'll see it's really going to ramp up and become probably a formidable hurricane. Now, part of the reason that that's going to happen, this updated yesterday, and this is extremely important. I have been showing this map. You see, there it is on the 28th. I show this at least once a week, and I do it especially in the off season, as we keep track of one of the larger puzzle pieces that drives each hurricane season. One of those puzzle pieces is whether or not there will be an El Nino. And, well, there's the answer to that. El Nino is warmer than normal, equatorial Pacific waters. La Nina is colder than normal. And it looks like we might be heading towards a La Nina here. Uh, which means that from now through November, it's absolutely game on in the tropics. And I hate using that expression because this is not a game, but that's the, I don't know. I mean, it, you think it's busy now, October and into November. I mean, September is going to be busy too, but this hurricane season is just going to linger. And the other reason is the anomalies out here are absolutely incredible, well above the long-term average and the Saharan air layer, all of the instability dry air stuff is almost gone. You're going to have intrusions here and there, but this is the setup to give us a hyperactive season. Uh, I would say there's a pretty good shot that we reach the upper end of most of the forecasts that are out there in the numbers of named storms and the accumulated cyclone energy, the actual score of the season in terms of energy output and unfortunately, the third component, a high impact year for human beings and anybody else that's living and breathing that lives along the coastline here of any of these areas of the Atlantic Basin. And I'm not just singling out the United States. It's very important to remember that. Look at what we've had here in the islands already with Brett and Don and then Harvey. And we had Cindy and, of course, we've had Franklin make landfall. Um, it's just and we have a long way to go and you need to remember that uh, this is very serious now we're not just you know this is not hype it is happening and Harvey should be a reminder of that so you notice very warm sea surface temperatures extend and these are the anomalies these are the, the departures from normal and you can see on the scale here some of these sea surface temperatures are more than a degree Celsius above normal and that extends all the way over here. There are no cold anomalies in the western Atlantic. So just keep that in mind. I do want to point out an interesting little factoid. This is Harvey's cold water wake. Churned up the water, brought the Gulf of Mexico temperatures down just a little bit for what it's worth. All right. I want to show you the Euro forecast from Levi Cowan's website, tropicaltidbits.com, on what is now Tropical Storm Harvey and you see it located right here. So this map shows us a couple of neat layers of the atmosphere. You see the surface pressure, which is on this analysis, 1,011 millibars, 1011 millibars last night. This is the initial map. And then it shows us the outline of the 500 millibar pattern, uh, the different heights in the atmosphere. And you basically, like, you get to see the shape of these ridges out here for the most part. All right? And you'll see as this evolves, I'll point it out to you. So this is the initial map. And again, uh, here is Irma right here, which is, you know, now Irma. And there, of course, is Harvey. And this is initialized at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time last night. This is 24 hours out. So this would be tonight, Wednesday night, and then Thursday night, and then Friday night. And this is an, an important part here of the puzzle, okay? This is 72 hours, and you see we're getting this very dark color, this whatever you call that, not, is it crimson? Doesn't matter. Uh, building, that is the heights in the atmosphere building up, thicker heights, thicker ridging, and that's going to force Irma here to do something very, very important. And I want you to watch as we go from 72 to 96 hours. It's west, that ridge gets stronger, and then finally at day five, it takes a southwest dive. You see that? There's day four, and then the, there's day five as the ridge gets stronger, 
Um, Irma is forced off to the west-southwest, and it just goes from there. I typically don't show day six and seven since it's just so far out in time, and I want to stick to the five-day track frame, which is what the Hurricane Center shows. But this is going to be something we're going to be watching. You know, that's day five. You know, another five days, where is it going to end up? So the key to this is going to be, obviously, how much ridging do we have in the western Atlantic, how much trough comes down here over the east, and then how much ridging tries to build in back over from the continent here, and if there's any type of bridging over the top, as we call it, where the two ridges basically link up as uh, the trough that's going to dig in lifts out. And one of the things that I've learned over the years from different people uh, and credit where credit is due. You know what? I have definitely learned a lot from other folks out there. Uh, Larry Cosgrove, Joe Bastardi, uh, and others. Okay. Um, Dave Tolaris at Weather Risk. He probably doesn't want me to lump him in with, <laughs> with Joe, but, you know, story for another day, right? It's all good. But you learn things, and I think that the very warm water in the Atlantic may help to support stronger ridging. So we're going to have to really, 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 really watch Irma as it moves west, and it could be a big player. All right? So listen, several people have asked about how we fund what we do, and they said that I need to talk about it more, that I'm not talking about it enough, and I guess I understand that. I hate talking about funding, but if I don't, then uh, I'm going to run out of funding, I guess. So the answer is we do have you know the, the old reliable PayPal. If you want to make a contribution at any time, you want to support our work, you can send any amount you like to fund at hurricanetrack.com. And for the long-term survivability of all of this, uh, on a monthly basis to become a, a patron, this new crowdfunding effort on Patreon, which is pretty neat, you can go to patreon.com slash hurricane track. And of course, you can just go to hurricanetrack.com and click on the Patreon logo there. And um, we also have an app, Hurricane Impact. And I publish all of this stuff in the app. The app is about four bucks. It's for iPhone. And it uh, gives you everything that we do right in the app. So there's a lot of ways to support us. And uh, it was interesting. I got a couple of emails and people are like, dude, you need to promote how to support you. You gotta have people thinking that you're well funded and there's no problems and whatever, but they're right. You know, this is an independent small outfit that's trying to do big things. And uh, we got a lot of great people behind the scenes helping us. And some of those people getting on my case saying you gotta talk about funding or you're not gonna survive. So I appreciate that concern. Uh, I guess I focus too much on the content and sometimes not enough on how to make it keep running so there you go if you want to help out it certainly is appreciated and we're going to do good things with your money you know just think about it that way you help us out i'm not going on vacation somewhere we're going to do some good stuff with it and hopefully help some people all righty so i'm going to mention that from time to time i guess it makes sense <clears throat> okie doke i'm done i am in houston uh for a couple more hours I do have a camera running at the Barker Cypress Road area, and if you have our app, it is linked in there. It's also available. I have posted it on Twitter and our Facebook. Everything we do, by the way, is Hurricane Track. You know, that's the brand. You search Facebook, Hurricane Track, all one word, YouTube, Hurricane Track, Twitter, Hurricane Track. You understand. Uh, and so I'm going to pick the other two cameras up that have stopped running. Their batteries ran out as designed from Attic's uh, Reservoir and over at Bray's Bayou. Those two cameras are going with me, and I'm going to leave the Barker Cypress cam running, and one of my colleagues here in Houston will pick that up later, and then it's off I go back to North Carolina. All right, so we'll keep an eye on what's happening uh, with Irma, certainly with Harvey, and there's some potential of, of development in the Gulf. I didn't mention it much at all till now. But I don't want to talk about it yet because that's the last thing you want to do is mention something that in an area that's you know still suffering. And so we'll just wait and see how that evolves. I don't believe that it's going to be a problem, though, for the areas impacted by Harvey. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. That is it for me for now and uh, for today. I'll be traveling the rest of the day. Uh, I'm Mark Suttoth for HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you so much for watching and throughout this entire Harvey saga. 
Uh, I still have a couple days drive left, and I'll be doing video discussions along the way. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you as I head back home to North Carolina.